welcome to another edition of Prepare to Survive. I'm Libby Bowling with Pinellas County Communications. Joining me today is Lynn McQuestion with the Insurance Information Institute. Thanks for joining us. Oh, today. It's my pleasure. Today we want to talk about homeowners insurance. We are in the middle of hurricane season and today we're here in a typical, what seems to be a typical neighborhood in Pinellas County. Uh, and people need to understand what their homeowners insurance really covers. Can you tell us? Oh, absolutely. The first thing people need to do is they really need to read their insurance policy. I mean, this is something that people will say they pay a lot of money for, but they don't understand how it works, and you should. So take that insurance policy out, read it with a red pen in your hand, and circle anything that you don't understand. You should have a yearly conversation with your insurance agent or your company to make sure that your insurance keeps up with you. Property insurance is all about rebuilding cost. It's not what your home would sell for. It's what it would cost to rebuild it. And those costs go up because the cost of raw materials increases. You know, plywood, asphalt shingles, things of that nature. And people are going from, you know, a laminate countertop to granite countertop. Those things increase the rebuilding costs. So have that yearly conversation to make sure the insurance keeps up with you and understand that what you can sell it for is different than what it's insured for. Mm -hmm. One of the things you want to make sure is that you have guaranteed replacement costs or an inflation guard on your insurance policy so it keeps going up to take care of those additional costs. Another thing, like in a neighborhood like this, if these homes are beautiful, this is a lovely neighborhood, but if these homes, which were probably 20, 30, 40 years old, if those have to be rebuilt, they have to be built to the latest building code. And to comply with that will cost more. That's a good thing, but you wanna make sure you have something called building ordinance or law coverage so that you can build it up to the code and get yourself a stronger house. Mm -hmm. And people may not understand that when they upgrade, when they, what insurance does is put back what you have now. Right. True. So explain that. Well, like say for example, you put an addition on your home and you didn't tell your insurance company about it. Well, that portion of the home might not have coverage. Say that you upgraded your cabinets and as I said, you put granite in. Well, they've got it down that you have laminate. Is that what you want to replace it with. No, your insurance keeps up with replacing what you had before. And so the interior of the home changes. Many people have taken out carpeting and putting in, put in hardwood or bamboo or some other type of flooring. You want to make sure the insurance company knows that. So that's what you get back in there. The insurance company doesn't come in and inspect your house. There is a level of trust. And so you have to kind of give that information so that they know that you are covered. It's not, you know, I, I know people don't like to pay for insurance because they think it, it only pays off when something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But the fact is you want to be prepared for when something goes wrong. So make sure that that is kept up to date so that you get everything you need to get back to the way you were. So let's say we have a level of coverage to protect myself with those upgrades, let's say I've remodeled my kitchen, I've remodeled my bath, I've upgraded to higher level flooring or whatever. Right. Do you take pictures? Is that what you need to do? It is, you can take pictures before and after, but you still need to have that yearly conversation. You know, sometimes after disaster, people realize that they tried to save some little money up front, but it cost them more on the back end. Mm -hmm. So it's really not how low can you go, it's what do you need? And that's the question, what do you need? The same thing goes with the deductibles you've chosen. Mm -hmm. Now everybody in Florida has a hurricane deductible. Your regular deductible, as if you had a fire, that's usually a flat dollar amount. Mm -hmm. But the hurricane deductibles are percentage, and it's not a percentage of what you have the insured, for. you know, it's not a percentage of the loss, it's a percentage of the overall policy. Mm -hmm. So your policy, spells out exactly what that dollar amount is, make sure you know how much that is, and make sure you have a way to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, the reason it's there is to help lower the cost of insurance. So it's a higher deductible but that lowers what you pay annually. Mm -hmm. That's why it's there. 
Now we have to th talk about contents. Right. There is a separate coverage and levels of coverage for contents. Can you talk about that? Sure. Your homeowner's insurance policy covers the structure and the contents inside. Mm -hmm. So you should know what you own and how much it's worth. Great way to do that. We have free software. Mm. It's called knowyourstuff.org. It's even on an app mm -hmm. to make it easy. You can go out and take pictures, upload them to this website. It's stored in the cloud. It's safe. It's secure. Mm -hmm. But you can also take receipts for your high-end items, scan them in there so that when you have to file a claim, if you have to file a claim, you have it all documented. It makes the process go so much quicker. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Now, we have to talk about exclusions, too. Uh, you know, uh, homeowner's insurance is written for, it covers certain disasters, but there are exclusions to that. Well, you should talk about separate coverage for sewer backup. That's not covered in your policy. That's very inexpensive. And flood insurance isn't covered in the policy. That's really important coverage. And you know, in Florida, just about everybody needs flood insurance. You know, people say they live in low risk zones. I live in a low risk zone. I have a flood insurance policy. Yes. It's low risk zone the cost is four hundred thirty dollars a year and that's for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of coverage for my house and the contents that seems well worth it mm -hmm. but here's libby think about this twenty percent of insurance claims are paid to people who live in low risk zones that sounds like a high number to me so twenty percent of claims so you never know where a flood's going to exist so flood insurance is important keep in mind you can't wait until we have three days of rain exactly. solid to get it because it takes 30 days mm -hmm. from the time you pay the premium for that flood insurance to become effective. Mm -hmm. So um, also there is renter's insurance and we want to understand what renter's insurance is. You know, so many renters think that they don't have enough to insure, but your landlord's insurance policy does not cover your personal possessions. So renters really need to look at renter's insurance. A great thing to do so they know how much to get. Do that, knowyourstuff.org. Go to that free app, mm -hmm. get an inventory, and buy enough insurance to cover that. Now let's say we have suffered a disaster. Right. And we do have to leave the home. Let's say a hurricane. Right. Some situation like that. There is the additional living expense clause in these policies. Absolutely Let's talk right. about that. Absolutely in detail. right. That's a good good question. In your homeowner's insurance, there is coverage for additional living expense, A L E. That doesn't mean that you can stay in a real high end hotel. What it means it covers the costs over and above what you would usually spend if you had to live elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's really good protection, but you have to ask, is it enough? So maybe some, you might want to increase that. For example, if a home was destroyed and your additional living expense was only for six months, that might not be enough time. You might be out of your home much longer. Mm -hmm. So have that conversation and make sure it's enough to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. And the additional living expenses, it covers lodging. The lodging, what it food, covers. it covers lodging, food. If there's anything that's out of the ordinary that you have to pay because you can't live in your residence, it covers those sorts of things. If people have more, uh, want more information, where can they go? Well, we have a couple of resources. Um, they can go to insuringflorida.org. A lot of great consumer information there. They can go to Insurance Information Institute. The national website is iii.org. They can go there and look at that free app, Know Your Stuff. Dot org. Lots of free information. We want people to be prepared and to know what they've got, be covered, be safe, and be happy they asked all the right questions. All right, Lynn, thank you so oh, much for pleasure. coming thank out you. And, and joining us today. Thank you. If you have any questions about preparing for an emergency, you can email Pinellas County Emergency Management at ema at pinellascounty.org. And you can also look at more episodes of Prepare to Survive on our YouTube channel. And if you need to look at information to help you prepare to survive a hurricane or other disaster, visit pinellascounty.org slash emergency. Join us again and prepare to survive.